Now we're going to look at the next method, linear equations. And we've got to get it in a certain form, just like we've done with the other methods. We want to get it in this form of dy dx plus p of x y equal to q of x. Once we get it in this form, we're going to multiply by an integrating factor, mu, equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. And that way, we have a total differential on one side. So I've got my first example here, y prime equals 2y plus x squared plus 5. The first thing I've got to do is get it in this form. I've got to have it in that form. So let's move it. y prime minus 2y equals x squared plus 5. So now I have it in that form. Well, what's my p of x? My p of x is a negative 2. My q of x is x squared plus 5. So I have it in the form I want. So now I want to create my integrating factor, mu. So that would be e to the integral of minus 2 dx. So now that's easy to integrate. So I get e to the minus 2x. So I take and I'm going to multiply this whole entire differential equation by e to the minus 2x. And we might as well go ahead and multiply by dx. So that way we get this. We get e to the minus 2x dy minus 2y e to the minus 2x dx. That's that side. Now I have this side. Uh, x squared e to the minus 2x plus 5 e to the minus 2x and all that's times dx. So I look at this and it's this side is the total differential, and it's always, 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 always going to be the total differential of the unknown function y in this case. Sometimes it could be x, but in this case it's y, times the integrating factor e to the minus 2x. That's always what's going to be on that side. The total differential of the unknown function, in this case y, times the integrating factor e to the minus 2x. Now I have to integrate, uh, well before we'll keep it as is, but the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals, so I'm going to split this up. And now I'm going to integrate both sides, and again the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. So, what do I get here? I get y e to the minus 2x. The integral of du is u. The integral of dx is x. The integral of d bison is bison. So the integral of dy times e to the minus 2x is y times e to the minus 2x. Equal, now if you don't mind, I'm going to do this one first because it's easy. So I need a negative 2, so this would be minus 5 halves e to the minus 2x, and I'll go ahead and put my plus c. This one though, what am I going to do with this integral? x squared e to the minus 2x dx. Well, that's integration by parts. Lie 8. So lie 8. So I have an algebraic, I have an exponential. So u is x squared. So du would be 2x dx. And then over here, the dv is e to the minus 2x dx. Therefore, v, since I'm integrating, so this would be minus 1 half e to the minus 2x. So this equals minus x squared over 2 e to the minus 2x and then v dx, so the minus a minus makes it a plus, because you minus. Uh, the twos cancel out, so I'm going to have the integral of x e to the minus 2x d 
DX. Well, guess what? We get to do it again. So in this case, U is X, so DU is DX. V would be E to the, uh, DV would be E to the minus 2X DX. V would be minus 1 half E to the minus 2X. So what do I end up with? I'm going to have a minus x squared over 2 e to the minus 2x. That's from that first part. Now i got to do the integration by parts on this. So this would be minus x over 2 e to the minus 2x. And then a minus a minus again gives me a plus. I'll have a 1 half on the outside e to the minus 2x dx. So, what am I going to end up with? I'm going to end up with minus x squared over 2 e to the minus 2x minus x over 2 e to the minus 2x and then I'm going to have this m minus 1 fourth e to the minus 2x. And again, I've got a plus c, but I've already added it in there. So let's take all this and put it in here. So I've got a minus x squared over 2 e to the minus 2x. Then I've got this minus x over 2 e to the minus 2x. And if you don't mind, I've got a, a minus 1 fourth. And a, so I'm going to put, um, I'm going to add here a plus 1 fourth right there. Okay? because it's already negated. So let's simplify it a little bit. So y equals minus x squared over 2. Now what am I doing? I'm taking the whole thing and I'm multiplying by e to the 2x. So the e to the 2x and the e to the minus 2x cancel out. So the e to the 2x and the e to the minus 2x cancel out there also. Minus x over 2. And then what do I have here? So that's going to leave the minus five, ha uh, five halves plus one-fourth. So that'd be ten-fourths plus one-fourth. So that'd be minus eleven-fourths plus C times E to the, min uh, to the positive 2X. So there's my answer. Y equals negative X squared over 2 minus X over 2 minus eleven-fourths plus c times e to the positive 2x. Little integration uh, practice here for us, integration by parts twice. Now let's look at this one. This one is in the form I want it. So p of x is tangent of x, q of x is cosine squared of x. That's nice, it's already in the form. So mu, my integrating factor, would be e to the integral of tangent of x dx. But you know what? Just in case you don't remember the integral of tangent of x, let's split it up into sine of x over cosine of x. Because that's tangent of x. Put a negative there, put a negative on the outside. So that's e to the minus natural log of cosine of x. So that becomes secant of x. Why? Because bring the negative up. This comes up here to become a negative 1. e and natural logs are inverses. So it's 1 over cosine of x, which is the same thing as secant of x. So I'm going to take this whole differential equation and multiply it by secant of x. So what do I get? I get, as I told you, and, I, and I'm going to throw in there a d of x also, so I'm going to get on this side the total differential of the unknown function, which is y, times the integrating factor. What do I get on the other side? Well, I'm going to get cosine squared x times secant of x dx. Well, that'll cancel out with one of those. So I'm just left with 1 cosine of x. Let's integrate both sides. 
So I have y secant of x equals, what's the integral of cosine of x? It's sine of x plus c. So let's flip it. Let's take the cosine of x over the other side. So y equals sine of x cosine of x plus c times cosine of x. Now I want to come up here and use y of 0 equals 1. So 1 equals sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1 plus c times cosine of 0 is 1. So guess what? And that's a minus 1 there. So c equals a negative 1. So my final answer the three dots means therefore. My final answer is y equals sine of x times cosine of x minus cosine of x. And this is a particular solution. There's no arbitrary constants in it because it satisfies this IVP. So again, with linear, step one, get it in this form. Step two, integrate and then multiply the integrating factor and then multiply everything by the integration factor times dx or dy whatever the case may be again that one side will always be the total differential of the unknown function times the integrating factor